various supplements that exist with overlapping benefits and it can be very very difficult and challenging to ascertain which ones to go for so for simplicity we have chosen to discuss a few supplements in the following five categories so we have essential supplements which are often taken when specific vitamins and minerals can't be attained through your diet for example due to having a chronic illness such as ulcerative colitis we have longevity supplements, which focus on enhancing lifespan through reducing cellular damage, which is often caused by oxidative stress, as well as possessing anti-inflammatory properties. We have supplements that enhance mental performance by reducing stress-related outcomes and promoting mental clarity. We also have supplements that enhance physical performance, and these are designed to enhance various aspects of your athletic training or exercise and support your overall physical well-being. And finally, we have sleep enhancement supplements, which are designed to promote relaxation and improve your sleep quality. So beginning with our essential supplements, we have omega-3. And this is a type of polyunsaturated fatty acid, which can be obtained through the consumption of fish and nuts, for example, chia seeds and flax seeds. Now, omega-3 um, is important for supporting physiological roles, such as cardiovascular health and brain health, for example, um, synapse formation, which are the ends of your neurons where communication takes place. And its deficiency has been linked to inflammation, depression, as well as joint pain. Now, omega-3 can influence various signaling pathways, but they have been found to modulate cellular signaling events, membrane protein function, as well as gene expression. And clinical trials have found that omega-3 can help reduce the risk of cardiovascular disease, improve the symptoms associated with depression, reduce oxidative stress, as well as reduce inflammation. Up next, we have vitamin D which is a fat-soluble vitamin obtained through sunlight exposure, as well as certain foods, which include salmon, trout, and mushrooms. Now, vitamin D is essential for calcium homeostasis. It also supports cell growth, bone growth, as well as remodeling. And its deficiency can be linked to osteomalacia, which is the weakening of the bones. Now, vitamin D acts by binding to a receptor in the body known as the vitamin D receptor, which is found across various cell types. And this binding regulates the expressions of hundreds of genes, influencing various bodily functions, including calcium absorption in the gut, maintenance of bone health, the modulation of the immune system, and so on. And research has found that vitamin D can help reduce the risk of diabetes as well as hypertension, as well as possessing anti-inflammatory benefits through the reduction of oxidative stress. Up next in this category, we have selenium which is often unspoken about, but it's actually a mineral that's needed in very small amounts in the body for normal physiological function. It's present across very various foods, including Brazil nuts, seafoods, as well as organ meats. Now, selenium is a constituent in over two dozen selenoproteins that play crucial roles in reproduction, thyroid hormone metabolism, DNA synthesis, and provides protection from oxidative damage as well as infection. Now, its deficiency has been associated with male infertility and might play a role in cardiomyopathy and Ketchenbeck disease, which is a type of osteoarthritis. And selenium is known to act as a cofactor for the antioxidant enzyme glutathione peroxidase and helps minimize oxidative damage through cellular metabolism. And research has found that selenium can help reduce the risk of cardiovascular disease, anxiety. It can also help improve cholesterol levels and, and reduce triglyceride levels and also has antioxidant properties. And finally, in this category, we have magnesium, which is a very vital cofactor in almost over um, 300 enzymatic reactions that take place within the body, making it essential for numerous physiological processes. In particular, magnesium can support protein synthesis, both muscle and nerve formation, as well as blood pressure and glucose control. And its deficiency has been associated with fatigue, weakness, loss of appetite, and nausea and vomiting in very severe cases. Now, its deficiency is thought to come about due to its poor bioavailability from foods, with only roughly 30 to 40% of what's ingested being actually absorbed by the body. Without This goes without saying that there are at least 11 forms of magnesium that exist, some of which have been associated with very clear benefits, such as magnesium glycinate improving sleep, magnesium l 3 nate enhancing cognitive function, and magnesium taurate supporting cardiovascular function. 
in clinical trials have demonstrated that magnesium can help improve glycemic control, reduce blood pressure and the risk of cardiovascular disease, as well as having anti-inflammatory properties. Now, up in our next category, which is the longevity supplements, we have berberine, which is an alkaloid that is found in barks, leaves, twigs, roots, or the stems of various plants, such as barberry, Oregon grape, and tree turmeric. Now, berberine is known for the regulation of multiple signaling pathways within the body, including the CERT1 signaling pathway, which is thought to be one of the candidate molecules for promoting healthy aging. And research has shown that berberine can help improve glycemic control, reduce total cholesterol and triglyceride levels, reduce blood pressure, and improve hormonal balance in individuals with PCOS. Up next, we have coenzyme Q10, which is also known as CoQ10. And this is a lipid-soluble vitamin-like coenzyme that is synthesized within the body. It can also be found in whole grains, as well as oily fish such as salmon and tuna, and organ meats such as the liver. It plays a crucial role in the production of ATP in the mitochondria and can neutralize free radicals and lipid structures. Research has therefore shown that coenzyme Q10 can help reduce inflammation, reduce cholesterol and triglyceride levels, excuse me, improve glycemic control, as well as having antioxidant effects. Continuing on with our mental performance supplements, we have ginseng, which is a family of plants used in traditional Chinese medicine for a wide variety of preventative purposes. Now, the bioactive components of ginseng are known as ginsenicides, and they have multiple mechanisms of actions that generally benefit the immune system. And research has found that ginseng has anti-inflammatory benefits, helps to improve attention and memory, and interestingly, helps to improve cognitive performance in patients with Alzheimer's disease. Next, we have Rhodiola rosea, which is a medicinal plant from the Rhodiola genus. And the plant root contains many bioactive compounds, with the two main ones being rosevin and silicide. And whilst the mechanism of action is unknown, it's postulated that Rhodiola blunts cortisol and nitric oxide levels under very stressful conditions. Research has also found that Rhodiola rosea has anti-inflammatory benefits, can help reduce fatigue, as well as improve attention. Up next, we have ashwagandha, which is a popular herb used in traditional Indian medicine. And the roots of this adaptogen are often used for its anti-anxiety and stress-relieving effects. It also contains several active compounds, such as alkaloids, flavonoids, and so on. And it's been hypothesized that ashwagandha affects cortisol levels by influencing the hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis. Clinical trials have also found that ashwagandha can help reduce anxiety, improve sleep, as well as reduce stress. Now, onto our physical performance supplements. We have creatinine, which is an organic molecule that is produced in the liver, in the kidneys, as well as the pancreas from the amino acids arginine, glycine, and methionine. It's commonly found in fish and meats, but supplements are used to increase the, the intramuscular creatinine stores by roughly 30% due to its poor bioavailability from food. And creatinine's mechanism of action is through storing high energy phosphate groups in the form of phosphocreatinine. And these phosphate groups are used to donate, to donate and regenerate ADP back into ATP, with, which is the body's um, primary energy carrier. Research has also found that creatinine can help increase upper and lower body strength by increasing lean tissue mass and can help reduce body fat percentage. Up next, we have beta alanine, which is a non-proteinogenic amino acid synthesized in the liver. And it can be found in small quantities through animal-based foods such as beef and poultry. And beta alanine is known as a rate limiting precursor to kerosene synthesis. This is basically a very fancy way of saying that without enough beta alanine, you effectively struggle to make enough kerosene in the body. And because of this, beta alanine is known to increase kerosene levels in the skeletal muscles. Beta alanine is also used to buffer acid induced acid exercise induced acidosis, which leads to muscle which leads to muscle fatigue during workouts. And clinical trials have shown that beta alanine is useful for reducing fatigue and reducing oxidative stress. And it's also found to improve performance in mid to short duration, high intensity exercises. Up next, we have urolithin A, which is a gut microbiome derived postbiotic metabolite. 
and it can be found in pomegranates, ber berries, as well as nut walnuts. And urolithin A engages various mechanisms, including activating the NERF2 antioxidant pathway and can also upregulate the expression of various antioxidant enzymes, such as glutathione peroxidase and, and superoxide dimutase, thereby enhancing cellular antioxidant defense capacity. Research has also shown that urolithin A is useful for its anti-inflammatory benefits, improving um, muscle strength as well as muscle endurance and as well enhancing mitochondrial health via urolithin A um, removing defective mitochondria that actually accumulates with advancing age. And on to our final category we have um, sleep enhancements. Um, we begin with chamomile which is a daisy-like medicinal plant that contains various terpenoids and flavonoids and it's used as an anti as an antioxidant and anti-inflammatory herb now apigenin is a flavon is a flavonoid that's found in chamomile and can bind to benzodiazepine receptors and this increases the activity of gaba a receptors which in turn favor sleep and research has shown that chamomile is useful for reducing anxiety, improving sleep quality, as well as improving the symptoms of depression. And finally, we have melatonin, which is a neural hormone that is secreted by the pineal gland in the brain, and it regulates the sleep-wake cycle. It can be found in seeds or animal products, such as eggs and fish, as well as plants such as mushrooms and legumes. And it goes without saying that a healthy sleep is imperative for leading a long and healthy life with irregular sleeping patterns being associated with health problems such as obesity, high cholesterol and diabetes. Melatonin can help set the stage for sleep by binding to specific receptors in the brain known as MT1 and MT2 receptors, which play the roles in reducing nerve activity and decreasing dopamine levels, which is the neurotransmitter that helps you stay awake. In fact, melatonin is um, suggested for individuals who are jet lagged due to traveling. And clinical trials have shown that melatonin is useful for improving sleep quality, reducing insomnia symptoms and having antioxidant effects. Mm -hmm.